Hello, my friends. So, recently I've had a few people ask about basal testing and what it is, why you need to do it, how to do it. The gist is, basal insulin is the foundation of your insulin therapy. It's meant to cover the fasted state. So, between meals, overnight, when you haven't eaten in 8 to 12 hours, the times where you have no food and no active insulin in your system, basal insulin is there to keep a lid on your blood sugar and prevent your liver from outputting a bunch of glucose. Because without the right amount of basal insulin in your system, that's what your liver will do. So, to basal test, we need to isolate that one variable of our insulin therapy, which means no food in your system and no insulin in your system other than the basal. And that sounds a little daunting and I think people get kind of confused about this, but it's super duper simple. All you do is just don't eat <laughs> and then don't take any insulin and then check your blood sugar and see what happens. So I'm gonna show on this lovely chalkboard that I wrote up here uh, a couple of scenarios of what kind of results you could get on a basal test and then what to do from there. But in theory, overall, I'm gonna use my fancy green chalk to illustrate this. If your basal rate is set properly, your blood sugar will stay completely flat. It'll look like this. Flat, super flat. That, I drew it at 85. This is from hour zero to hour 24. That's 24 hours of completely flat blood sugars. That's what your basal should give you, in theory, if it's set right. Now, there's a lot of reasons why you might not get this. And one of those reasons is if your basal insulin rates are up too high. And it could be that you're on a pump and you have multiple rates for different times of the day. It could be that you're on injections and you have multiple doses that you take during different times of the day. Most people need variable amounts of insulin depending on what time of day it is. For me, I take the bulk of my insulin overnight. So, you know, if this is midnight right here, I take the bulk of my insulin at about 9 p.m. So it covers this peak in the early hours of the morning and that's when I'm most insulin resistant so I take about three quarters of my insulin dose of basal insulin during that time. So if I want to test that basal rate I take that injection at 9 p.m. That basal rate or sorry that basal insulin for me peaks in about seven hours so seven hours after 9 p.m. is four o'clock in the morning. So if that's if that rate is set too high what I'll see is this like nice sort of flat line from overnight and then pfft, it'll tank and it'll bottom out and it'll just run me completely low like and it's a long sticky low that takes a lot of glucose and sometimes I can bring it back up with a little bit of glucose and then it'll come right back down and then I can bring it back up and then it'll come right back down and if you see a pattern like this, where no matter how much glucose you eat, your basal insulin just drives you down, that means that your dose, whoops, that's a D, dose is high. I wrote it in red because it's bad, and all of our CGMs show low blood sugars in red. So, there you go. If your basal test, when you don't eat, between meals or overnight sends you super low and you just keep dropping no matter how much insulin or excuse me no matter how much glucose you shove down your face you keep dropping dose is too high that means that you'll want to drop your dose a little bit and the next time you do a basal rate test see what happens so say you do that and you drop your rate and again, you're testing your overnight rate. So for me, I would take that dose at about 9 p.m. So say that I took my dose at 9 p.m. And it kept me stable until about, ski like 3 o'clock. And then, woo, it just sent me sky high. 
like that. Usually when I test my overnight rate, if it's not high enough, come around three or four o'clock in the morning when the dawn phenomenon hits, sky high blood sugars. So if that happens, that means your dose is low. Make sense? So a really important part of your insulin therapy and nailing your doses so that you get those tight flat lines and you lower your standard deviation is to look for patterns like this. This pattern of low and the squiggly spiky where you're eating a crap ton of glucose and no matter what you do you're still low means your basal's up too high. If this one, if you just run up and same thing it's just with insulin instead of glucose if you take insulin and it drops you and then you rise right back up and then it you take another dose and then it drops you and then you come right back up again like that if you see this consistent push up no matter how much insulin you take and your correction doses aren't working the way that they should be you don't have enough insulin in your system so it's a pretty simple premise right but the thing is, we need to be able to identify what the problem is. And if you have too much, too many variables in your system, like food, like uh, medication, uh, coffee, exercise, an argument, all kinds of stuff like that, you won't be able to know what is affecting your blood sugars. Mm, excuse me, my dinner's talking. Anyway, so you won't be able to know what's affecting your blood sugars and it's really difficult to know which rates to change and then you end up with these like crazy chaos numbers and you don't know what to do and it's confusing so my go-to thing when I'm confused and I'm like what is going on and I don't know what to do basal test no food no corrections no activity I basically just don't do anything or I just pick a day at work when I'm not going to be doing anything and I don't eat and I just drink water and I check my blood sugar frequently and I see what happens. I will break a basal test if I start to consistently drop low like this. If I have to eat glucose during my basal test, I know that my basal rate is up too high and I need to stop the basal test. I need to eat something because I've been covering my food with part of my basal. It's not an ideal situation, but it's better than a sustained, severe, extended hypo like this where you have to eat a crap ton of glucose and you feel like crap when you're done. Don't do that. <laughs> now, if I do a basal test and I keep drifting up, I will allow for a certain bit of wiggle room. You know, this green line right here for the perfectly steady. If I'm running, let me find... Ooh, some yellow chalk. All right, so I don't know if you can see all these colors, but they make me happy because I like color coding things and visuals are helpful. So if I start out flat and then I kind of drift up like that and then I just kind of stay flat, but at a slightly elevated level, that means that maybe I could have taken a correction dose to nudge that back down and then my basal would have kept me flat. It's sort of one of those things where you have to fine tune it. But to me, a high and stable like this during a basal test is a good thing. That's a successful test, for me anyway. That means that I have some small, minute adjustments to my regimen that I need to make. This kind of spike, that's some major adjustments. This kind of drop, that's some major adjustments. I don't like being in those situations. So I do basal testing about once a week. And I have two different basal doses. One is at 9 p.m. and the other is at about 7 or 8 o'clock a.m. Uh, the 9 p.m. I get like three quarters of my total daily dose of basal insulin and then the uh, 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning one when I wake up I get about the 25 percent of the the rest of it. So if I want to test my daytime basal rate I just skip lunch. I don't eat breakfast most days so lunch would be technically my fast breaking meal um, so I just skip that sometimes I'll have coffee most of the time I'll have coffee <laughs> um, and then just see what happens through the afternoon because the 7 a.m. dose starts to peak at about 2 to 3 p.m. 
So by 2 to 3 p.m., I will know if that dose is set right. Like today, I skipped lunch today just to see what would happen, and I was pretty stable, I was pretty flat, I was fine, and then by the time I got home at 6 o'clock, I had started to dip to 65. And so that to me says that maybe my daytime dose was up a little too high. So it's all about looking for patterns, major patterns like the ones I've shown you here. It's all about isolating individual variables. So, you know, take everything but the basal out of your system, see what happens. Watch for patterns. If you want to do the same thing without skipping meals, it's a little trickier, but it is possible. And it takes some regimented discipline to be able to do it. So if you want to test your basal rate without having to not eat, you need to eat a meal that you have 100% guaranteed nailed the base or the bolus for. You need to know exactly how much insulin to take and at what time to take it and when you're going to eat that meal. And then you need to eat said meal, bolus for said meal, and watch your blood sugars. Do that two or three days in a row. You have to essentially create the same circumstances three, two or three days in a row and check what happens. If you get anomalous results in those two or three days, usually it's a basal thing. It could be that you are a long-term type 1 diabetic who has gastroparesis and some delayed stomach emptying problems and you're struggling with that a bit. But in theory, if your digestion works great and you've nailed the bolus for that meal and you repeat that meal at the same time with the same dose in the same circumstances for a couple of days in a row, you can see what your basal rate is doing underneath that. That's what I usually suggest to parents try to do with their kids because I think it's cruel and unusual punishment to deprive a kid of food for a day just to see if their insulin is set appropriately. Um, kids, uh, kids shouldn't be fasting, you know, they, they need food, they need to grow. But us adults, we can skip a meal or two here and there and everything will be fine. So, in short, in summary, TLDR, whatever you want to call it, basal rate should keep you nice and flat along this green line right here. If you drop low and you have to eat a bunch of glucose and you keep dropping low, your dose is too high and you need to lower it. If you start to rise and no matter how many corrections you take, you keep going right back up, your dose is too low and you need to up it. Repeat these tests, especially if you're female. If you're female, you're going to go through a monthly hormonal cycle that is going to change your basal rate on about a weekly basis give or take, depending on you and depending on whether you have uh, PCOS or severe insulin resistance, uh, if you're type 2, if you're perimenopausal, um, all kinds of shit stuff. So anyway, I am 30 years old. I am in the prime reproductive age of femalehood. So for me, I have a 30-day cycle, like regular, regimented 30-day cycle. And I always have to increase my basal dose at ovulation. I always have to increase it um, about halfway between ovulation and PMS, which is like two, three days before bleeding. I have to increase it at PMS, and then I have to decrease it at bleeding. So I have four different basal rates per month where I start with my baseline and then I kind of titrate my dose up over the month until I bleed and then it drops off and then I start that whole process over again. So I do basal testing once a week and daytime basal testing is easy because I'm awake. Nighttime basal testing is a little more tricky and I gotta skip dinner and wake up a few times or just skip dinner and hope I don't go low in the middle of the night and see where I wake up. Sometimes I do that. But anyway, long story short, you want to make sure that your basal rate is set properly because if it's set properly then you'll get fairly consistent results out of your boluses you'll get fairly consistent results out of the meals that you figured out how to bolus for and you'll get fairly consistent results out of your exercise and I say fairly consistent for all of this because everybody with diabetes knows that you can do the same thing a million times and get a million different results but overall you should see consistent patterns 
to what's going on with your blood sugars. So I hope this helps. I know some people are very visual when it comes to uh, learning information, so I drew a color-coded graph over there. But the gist is to test your basal, just don't eat. Don't take any insulin. Check your blood sugar, see what happens. So I hope you do some basal testing soon. I hope you figure some stuff out with your insulin regimen and you can fine-tune your doses and you can get that blood sugar in that good, good, tight control and everything is great for you. And if this video helped you, let me know. And I'll see you next time.